All right, we're on. Hey, everyone, it's Dr. David here. In this YouTube live stream today, we're going to be answering the question, how to get knee arthritis swelling under control. We're going to be talking about this topic um, and the reason for this um, uh, the reason for this question is, uh, I'm going to find the question here. Here it is. All right. I had a, a, a viewer or a, um, a, a subscriber comment on one of our videos and he, his name is James. And he asked, uh, I have o OA, which is osteoarthritis in my left knee, along with chronic swelling. Should I continue to play golf? Am I doing damage? And then we responded and we said, we're so sorry to hear about your knee arthritis. Um, the fact that you have swelling means your knee is chronically irritated and being on your feet for too much is likely going to continue to cause swelling. That means that golf is probably not the best thing to be doing right now. You need to get that swelling under control. Then James replied back and said, hey, thanks for the reply. My doc said that I would probably have to come in occasionally and have him draw the water off my knee until I decide it is time to have the knee replacement. He has tried cortisone injection in various NSAIDs, which is non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, ibuprofen is a common one, and ice, and nothing affects it. It actually seems to be getting better when I work out or play golf. So we're gonna dive into this question. I've got a few tips um, to help everyone out here who's dealing with swelling from knee arthritis. Um, and if that's you, chime in on the chat here. And even if you're not uh, dealing with knee arthritis or swelling right now, just say hello on there and let me know that you can hear me. Um, if you can hear me, then I know that we're good. Let me check. My mic is off or something. Anyone hear me? Please type in the chat. I'm, I'm getting some uh, technical errors today. Hmm. Hey, James, you're on. Okay, good. Just making sure I might, the feedback on my microphone here is not working. So, but I'm glad you can hear me. It looks like we're all, we're all going to go. All right, let's get this show on the road. So um, to answer James's question um, about, you know, the doctor saying the, the water off the knee, this is a very, very common thing. Hello, everyone. Hi, Broken Karen or Broker Karen. I'm sorry. Broker Karen. Hi, Cindy and Dashti Wright. Hello. Um, the the When they're looking at taking fluid off the knee, there's an excess buildup of fluid that happens inside the knee joint. Let me get my knee joint here. So if you look at the knee here, this is the right knee. There's a kneecap inside the joint, right where I'm sticking my finger. Extra fluid will build up as a response to extra pressure going through the knee joint. It's the knee joint's way of cushioning itself. Because if there's a lot of, of compression, the cartilage begins to get affected. The tissues inside begin to get affected. And so we need you to take the pressures off in order to normalize the fluid. Think of it this way. If you've ever gotten a blister on your skin that didn't pop or burst, what is it filled with? It's filled with a fluid and your body does that to make a cushion under your skin so that you protect the, the surfaces below your skin. So you need to make sure that you take pressures off just like you would stop, you know, using your hands if you got a blister or wherever you got a blister, you need to stop take you need to stop putting extra pressure on your knee joints. Um, now, the doctor's solution is very straightforward, logical and not thinking about the deeper problem and that's, you know, he's doing the best he can with what he knows. He's not a physical therapist likely. He's probably a physician or an orthopedic surgeon and they're looking at what they can do with what they know, which is Let's drain that thing because it's swelled up. But they're not asking the deeper question of, well, why is it swelling? Because the, the level of understanding that most people have of why knees swell, especially when there's arthritis, is that it's just the process of arthritis. But there's extra pressure and they don't know how to take off the, the pressure. Going back to the NSAIDs, um, the, the non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, which is like your ibuprofen, naproxen is another one. Uh, there's some other ones out there. Um, those can look to reduce inflammation, but it's very short term and you can't be taking ibuprofen for too long or any NSAIDs there. You only need to use them in a pinch. You know, if you, if you're dealing with pain and you just want to get out of pain for a short period of time, 
getting injections is another anti-inflammatory drug. Uh, cortisone is what they usually uh, will, will put into the knee. And that does reduce inflammation and pain if, as long as it's done correctly. But again, it's also short term and the limits you on only getting up to three a year because we know that cortisone, the drug, actually damages connective tissue, which is what cartilage is made of and ligaments and tendons. So you can't get too many because it just decreases the integrity of your knee joint. So why do you feel better when you move around? This is a great question to ask. And, uh, and here in a minute, I'm going to give you tips on how to reduce the swelling. I'm, I'm just answering James's question. Um, you feel better when you move around, when you go exercise or play golf, because your muscles begin to move your joint. And if you're just sitting around, that pressure, that's usually because of a muscle imbalance, it, it just builds up. It, 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 and it stays in the same spot. So the, the pressure begins to, to hurt one area and it aches or throbs. And then you have to move around and it feels better. And then if you're moving around consistently, that movement allows the fluid inside the joint to move around and probably begin to nourish or, or heal the tissues in there. But then once you go back to sitting still again, like if you have a sedentary job or if you're just sitting out around at home and if you have knee arthritis, you're probably not moving a whole lot. But here's the, the not good thing, James. When you are exercising, you're probably feeding into the muscle imbalance unknowingly because what typically sets up knee arthritis is a muscle imbalance called, um, well, the name of it is anterior glide medial rotation syndrome. I've never really mentioned it on this channel because it's kind of a, a, a big mouthful, but the, um, the way that it presents, the way that it shows up in people is the quad muscles on the front of the thigh right here. Here's the foot. The muscles in the front of the thigh are too strong, too dominant. And then back in the butt area, that's the antagonistic muscle. That's big medical words for the muscle that opposes it. The one that kind of helps to, to do the opposite action. Um, and that doesn't always make straightforward sense too, because people think that, think that it's the hamstrings, but it really is the glutes based on, on uh, the, how the wiring works out, how the movement works out. So if you get stronger glutes, James, that will tend to shut off or reduce how much activity you get from the quads, which in turn reduces the pressure at the knee. It really is um, uh, glutes that are the key in fixing this problem. And when you go walking around the golf course or when you go exercising and whatever exercise you do, if you make it a point to begin to use your glutes more, which you've got tons of help on this channel for doing that. Um, then you can begin to offload the knee and now exercise and golfing, you know, being on your feet and playing golf can actually become a beneficial thing. Once you get the swelling down, this is key. This is what I'm going to go into next is what's of utmost importance for you right now, while you're dealing with the swelling is to avoid causing more swelling. Cause if you're chronically swelling, if you're, if you just go week to week, day to day, several times a week, most of the week you're swollen. What you're doing at your knee joint is you're just constantly irritating it. And little by little, as the weeks go by, the surfaces on the ends of the bone, the cartilage, the, the other tissues inside the, the joint are going to become affected and you're going to progress arthritis faster. You're going to make it happen faster. All of us are going to get arthritis. That's a known fact. We've seen this in the research. It doesn't mean that it's going to be painful, though. You can be an elderly person. You can get into your 80s, 90s, and beyond and feel fine in your knees. But if you took an x-ray, you, you probably have clinical arthritis. But the opposite can happen. You can have a, a very aggravated knee and be in your 30s or 40s and have a little bit of arthritis. It's always blamed on arthritis because that's what we've always seen in the x-rays. But it's really about the pressures that, go, that are going through your knee. You can have messed up looking bones on an x-ray and feel fine. You really can. Same thing happens in the spine and in the, in the lower back. So it really comes down to the pressures. And, and to fix that, you got to look at, at getting the glutes um, working right. But in the short term, you've got to take pressure off the knee. So what I would recommend, James, is hold on golf for a while. And you got to find the right amount of time that you can be on your feet without getting swelling because you got to do stuff, right? You got to go to the bathroom. You got to go cook a meal. If you work, you got to go to work. You got to you need to maintain your family relationships. You got to take care of yourself. Chores around the house. You might go to the store to pick up things you need. So you, you there's there's times when you have to be on your feet. But what you have to do is find the right amount of what you can do without swelling. So that, that might mean 
cutting out exercise that, that aggravates it. it doesn't mean you don't exercise at all james it just means certain exercises you need to avoid um, you might need to be doing exercise sitting down there's so many ways to change this you might um, ride the the scooter at the store you know take the motorized scooter instead of pushing the sharp shopping cart and it can take you some time it can take you anywhere from a few weeks to maybe several months to get the swelling to come down c consistently and here's why it's so important to get that swelling down. I'm going to tell you ways to help the swelling in just a minute. I, I just want to tell you the why. Why is this even a big deal? If you don't get that swelling down, then you can't begin to do exercises that help reverse the muscle imbalance to get knee arthritis under control for the long term. If you can reverse the muscle imbalance, then you can reduce the chronic swelling and then you can you know, get to a pain-free stage and then increase your activity. In other words, begin to exercise more, begin to be more active um, so that you can manage your whole health and put yourself in a situation where you don't ever have to have a knee replacement surgery or, or any other sort of knee surgery because your knees are healthy. So it's, it's a step-by-step -step process. We're actually developing a program that we're going to be offering online here soon that goes through all these details right now. Um, it's about midway through production. So uh, we'll be talking about it on the channel here more and more as we get closer to, to launching it. Um, but fixing knee arthritis is a huge process. And people that suffer from, from swelling at the beginning, it's it, that needs to get under control. And, and don't rely on your doctor to tell you how to do it. Um, you know, icing it, uh, uh, using medications, all the, the non-swelling things are really just short term. You've got to get rid of this swelling for the long term by getting off your feet. It's a mechanical problem, meaning there's too much force going through your knee joint. And if you can take off that force, then you can begin to really get the long lasting uh, relief from the swelling and put yourself in a position to move forward on exercises. Um, so I hope that makes sense. Uh, let me give you ask questions here, by the way. Um, I see a couple of questions I'll get to. Let me just cover my tips here for how to avoid swelling. Um, so I've already gone into a few, but let me just expand on them. Number one, stop walking. Get off your feet. And, and with another way that this is worded is relative rest. It doesn't mean do, do nothing. I don't mean be a couch potato and binge on Netflix or just, you know, be completely sedentary. Uh, I mean, re, be smart about when you do have to be on your feet and get off when you can. And it might feel lazy to you, you know, if you're a person that likes to be up on your feet doing things, but the health of your knees depend on it. And if you don't get off your feet, you're going to chronically swell over and over again. And it's okay to occasionally find your limit because it's going to grow as you heal and, and your swelling comes down. You'll find that you can be on your feet a bit more, but you need to pay attention to how much time you can be on your feet before you have to get off your feet because you're starting to hurt or swell. So that relative rest is super important. Avoid going on, on walks. This is under the same uh, uh, tip here. Because uh, some people think I need to go walking for exercise or my doctor even recommended that I go walking. Or I have patients often that we see here in the clinic that are coming from another clinic where they were told to walk on the treadmill at the clinic and their knees swelled up. And, and I have to tell them, I'm sorry, I know you got this advice from a, you know, another professional. Um, but the fact is it flared you up and we, we just got to stop doing that. And I'll explain everything that I've just told you, you know, here, here before. And I, once they get off their feet, once they do the right things to manage their swelling, and we can get their swelling down, then they start feeling a lot better. And then we can get into the walking for exercise. I tell them to go walk around the park, go to the mall, walk the dog, walk with family, walk around the store. Then walking is good. But do not walk if you're swollen. Do, do not pursue it for exercise. And if you're like James and you feel actually kind of better from walking, which is you know it's counterintuitive from what I'm telling you. Um, you have to understand this whole process and how it works so that you can um, invest in the long term rather than the short term. Because James is, you know, out there walking, enjoying himself, playing golf, and then his knee kind of feels better, too. So it makes sense that you do that. But unknowingly, he's probably feeding into the problem in the long term. And, yeah, he's going to fulfill what the doctor told him. You'll be in here every few months. Your knee's going to just swell up. I'm going to take out the fluid. Fluid's going to come right back. And it's just a matter of time before the joint gets damaged enough to where the doctor says, well, now you're, you know, it's been 10 years since we've been doing this. It's about time for the knee replacement. And you could have just avoided it had you done the right things. All right. The second thing is avoid stretching. And this is also counterintuitive. I know like the whole healthcare industry is against me on this, um, but I'm going to stick to my guns on this. 
the reason for stretching is just because it, it follows what I've been talking about. You don't want to put aggro extra pressure into the joint because you're going to aggravate. So if you go to bend your knee, like you're going to stretch it, the, the most common stretch that people do for their knee is this. They'll some version of this, maybe not exactly. They'll bring the leg up and they'll stretch like this. You get a big stretch in the front of the thigh right here, or they'll stretch the, the back of their thigh. They'll, they'll, um, you know, stick their leg out and, and put their, try to touch their toes with, with their leg. Those stretches, especially the more aggressive you do them, they add compression to your joints. And even though you feel good from doing the stretches because you feel a little more flexible afterwards, if you stretch very intensely, there's a reflex in the muscle called the stretch reflex that causes the muscle to contract. It's a protective reflex in order to, to keep the muscle from tearing. You're actually making the muscle stronger. And over time, gradually, you're, you're feeding into the imbalance and you're adding that pressure during the stretch as well as in the long term because you've just strengthened the muscles that are feeding the imbalance. I hope that makes sense. I've I've got all this worked out of my head. Obviously, I'm, I've been doing this for a long time um, and it just rolls off my tongue. But fat, rewind that if, if you're catching this on the replay or if you're live with us, go back as well and rewind that. Um, but that's a big, big deal. That's why you don't want to be stretching for this for the long term. Now, what I will say, an exception for stretching, if you know that stretching just makes you feel better and you want to do this all natural, you don't want to be taking pain medications. What I tell my patients all the time is, Go ahead and stretch here and there. It's not going to, you know, make you completely worse or, or throw you off the edge. If you know that stretching doesn't make you swell right away or is it going to aggravate you from time to time, you know, maybe a couple times a week, go for it. But you better be working on your glutes. You better be, if you're swelling, you better be off your feet to, you know, minimizing it. You, you got to be doing the other things, but it's kind of like being on a diet. You know, if you're still going to lose weight, if you have a, a slice of cake here and there, but you're eating healthy the rest of the time. It's the same thing here. I'm not saying never, ever, ever, ever stretch. I'm saying minimize it and don't make that the main thing that you're doing. Because I've met people that are stretching several times a day for long periods of time. They're putting in, you know, an hour or two or three of stretching a day to, to help their, their knee arthritis because that's what they've been told is good. And it just makes them worse in the long run. I hope that makes sense. Next thing, avoid weightlifting. For the same reasons, you're going to be compressing the joint. If you don't have your glutes as the primary muscles that you use in leg day, when you go do leg exercises, if you're a weightlifter and you like to go to the gym, whether it's machines or, or uh, free weights, if you have a trainer. If you're going to the gym and you leave that gym with your quads, the front of your thighs, these muscles right here, if these muscles are tired and fatigued more than anything else in your legs, you're making your knee arthritis problem worse. You're killing your knees little by little. You, you may not feel at that time that you worked out. In fact, you might have the self-gratification of, I look at my muscles. Let me pull up my, my shorts here. Look at my thighs. You can see the definition of the muscles. My knees are going to be healthy. The trainer said so. The therapist said so. My doctor's proud. The surgeon's happy. But it's the wrong thing to be doing because it's just feeding into that excessive pressure in the knee joints. What you should be doing instead is leaving saying, I got my butt muscles tired. Quads might have worked. That's okay. They'll work some. But if you can leave here saying, my glutes got a heck of a workout. I'm going to be sore in my butt muscles here in the next couple of days. And, and I feel it there. I did this exercise and that exercise, and they got my butt muscles tired. My glutes are fatigued. That's good. Then weightlifting is good for you. But now if you're swelling right now, if you've just been swelling here over the past couple of days in the past week, I would stop with the weightlifting for your legs anyway and hold until your swelling is under control so that you can go to the gym and know that you're not going to flare yourself up you know, the first time you go lift weights. What you can do is do things seated. Go to the gym and sit down and do some arm exercises. Find machines that aren't going to involve your legs a whole lot and work on the things that are going to help your legs right now, which is, which is the next point here. What you should be doing to get your swelling under control as far as exercise is high repetition, low resistance exercise. So what that is, is something where you're moving a lot, but not with a lot of pressure against you because you want to el eliminate or I'm sorry, you want to minimize the pressure going through your knee joints um, while doing lots of motion. And the purpose of that is to get your knee joint to move a lot, kind of like what I was saying with James earlier. The, that the reason why exercise feels good is because you're getting the fluid to move. So let's let's double down on that. You're getting motion in your knee joint, 
but without pressure, which follows the guidelines that I'm telling you is don't put a, a whole lot of pressure through your leg. Don't contract your quads a whole lot. So some examples of what you can do would be cycling, like a, an exercise bike, a, a, a stationary bike. You can go outdoors on a bike. You just got to make sure that you're safe. You're not going to you know, fall off the bike or use your quads way too much. Now, with cycling, you can feed into your muscle imbalance. I got to warn you about this. If you feel like you're not using your quad, if you feel like you're using your quad muscles too much and you're not using your glutes, even if you're doing high repetition, low resistance exercise, but you are primarily using your quads, you're going to technically feed into the problem. It may not be as, as intense or severe as if you were to go lift weights or walk a lot, but it is going to feed into the problem. But the easy fix is get your butt muscles to fire. And there's a video coming on this soon. We, we've been having some technical issues getting all this worked out to get a bike in here. Uh, we don't have a bike here in the gym, actually, because it's I mean, here in the clinic because it just isn't part of what, what we do every day. Um, but I'll, I'll give you the, the hint to this. When you're cycling, if you're on a bike, let me get you the best angle here. Say I'm on a bicycle. This is probably even better. If you're going straight up and down with your legs, just like this, you might be using these muscles quite a bit. So an easy thing that you can do is start to open your legs just subtly when you're cycling, point those knees out a bit. And then you also have to think about getting this muscle involved, the butt muscle, whenever you're pushing down. When you're pushing down is when you're gonna tighten up the butt. So every time you push down, butt should tighten up. And then this one should tighten up, and then this one. So you're just alternating, squeezing the butt muscles every time you push down, and if you angle your knees out a bit, that should assist you in firing your butt muscles. Now, this is challenging to do the first time. Some people get it right away, but most people, they have to practice three, four times, maybe more, to get their glutes to actually be the main muscle that they're using while they're cycling. Especially if you're a seasoned cyclist, like you have a, a nice bicycle and you like to go out on, on long rides and you might even have those shoes that clip into the pedals. We see those patients here all the time. It's a little tougher to get your body to use your glutes because you're pulling as well as pushing when you have those shoes with the clips. So you've got to really work hard on, on getting those glutes to work. And if you can't get your glutes to work on the bike, then ditch it. It's not something to pursue. There's much other better things. There's other better things, much better things that you could be doing. Uh, one thing that we talk about here on the channel all the time is tailgate swings or, or knee swinging. Um, what you would do is just sit somewhere where your legs can dangle and just do this. No machines necessary. Just sit somewhere a little tall. If you don't have a tall seat, put some pillows under your bottom and make it a tall seat. Stack several pillows and your feet will dangle off the floor and just swing back nice and, and nice and easy back and forth. You can do both legs at the same time if you want. No resistance or very, very little resistance. And you need to get thousands of reps. So I wouldn't be counting reps here. You'll, you could, of course, but it might take you a long time to count a thousand reps. Uh, what would probably be better is just to go for five to 10 minutes or more at a time. Honestly, when I have patients that are very flared up, very swollen, as some of you watching right now may, might be, I tell them to do five minutes hourly. We're talking at least 10 hours a day. So 500 minutes, uh, and I'm sorry, 50 minutes. So about an hour's worth. My math is wrong. It's the end of the day. So five minutes a day, 10 times a day or more, if you can do 14 times a day, even better. So we're talking about 50 minutes, about an hour's worth of, of, of this, but spread out. And it has to be spread out so that you can get frequent bouts of motion throughout your um, uh, uh, day so that you can get the joint lubricated and nourished and begin to heal the cartilage in there or give it its best chance at healing and uh, allowing your uh, your swelling to go down. So uh, as far as the excess fluid, some, another question that I, that I get all the time is uh, you've got that fluid will be sucked back up by your body. It's not like it's always going to be there. The reason why it might be there for you for, for a long time if your knees are swollen is because um, you're constantly putting too much pressure through it. So the body just keeps it there. But once you start doing the right things, that fluid will start to come down. It will diminish. I've, I've never seen it not go down when I've seen patients and we've handled them correctly. I've never had a patient that I've said, yeah, you need to go get that pulled out by the surgeon. They're going to stick a needle in you and get it sucked out. That's really a, a short-term solution, and it's, it's going to come right back if, you, if that's what you're doing right now. So um, 
let me see if there's anything else I need to. Nope, I went through all my points, so I'm going to just answer some questions here, and then I got to I got to get out of here. Um, all right, so Jay, how about PRP treatment? She said, or he said, PRP treatment is platelet-rich plasma. Um, that is a, a natural thing, so they're not putting any any abnormal things in you. They're they're drawing your blood, spinning it in a centrifuge, and pulling out the the platelet-rich plasma. That's why it's PRP. And then they're injecting it back into your body at, at the site that you need it, like your knees in this case. Um, I've seen some people benefit from it. And I've seen others that said it didn't have an effect. What I like is I haven't seen anybody say they, they got worse. Um, now, it is a, a, not covered by uh, insurances or by Medicare. Um, if you're out of the United States, I'm not sure what your healthcare system is like and what, if they cover it. Um, but it's worth a shot to ask. And it, I, I would say, you know, if you can do it, go for it. Um, I wouldn't rely on it, though, because it's not fixing the mechanics of your knee joint. If you still have over dominant quads, um, you have a lot of pressures that are going to build up. And even if you did have a successful PRP treatment, it's just a matter of time before it's going to be ruined because you never fix the, the underlying muscle imbalance. So it still comes back to fixing the glutes. But it might be a great solution to buy you some time um, while you're working on the glutes to um, avoid having a knee surgery or, or you know, getting to feel better right right now, you know, getting some more sleep if you're having trouble sleeping and being able to be on your feet a bit more. So I hope that answers that question, Jay. Gina says, hi, I watch your videos. Thank you. You're welcome, Gina. Thank you for watching. Sarah Ham gives us a thumbs up. And Igen, Igentinos, I've been taking advice and working on my feet and knees. Awesome. Let us know how it's going. Um, the foot muscles are a big deal when it comes to the knees. Um, because it's the joints below the, the the knee, obviously. And so getting your, your foot muscles stronger it tremendously um, helps the knees. It complements the glutes. I've been talking about all glutes. I haven't really mentioned feet, um, but they they really go together to get your knee pressures um, uh, uh, in normal normalized. All right. KB Good. Not one doctor, physical therapist ever taught me about drink water tailgate swings, load exercises, definitely improved in a week. Wow. Have OA osteoarthritis and torn meniscus. So very thankful for this doctor and channel. Oh, thank you, KB Good. I'm, I'm glad that you found us and that you, you've been able to benefit from this. Um, and yeah, water, as simple as it is, it, it makes a big, huge difference because our body's tons of water. Every cell in our body is filled with, with a bunch of water. That's how all the molecules move around. Nothing happens in our body without water. And if you're chronically dehydrated, which you might have not even know, if you just up your water intake, you might feel tremendously better. Um, and then the tailgate swings, as I mentioned, they're super important in the glute exercises. Big, big deal. Panama Rose, thank you. Andrew, you're welcome, Panama Rose. Andrew Ma Macaluso, does piriformis syndrome have an effect on knee pain? Great question. Um, piriformis syndrome, uh, that's a muscle in the glute. It's a deep glute muscle that's right over the sciatic nerve. Um, so it's pain in that area. That's what they call piriformis syndrome. Um, absolutely can affect uh, knee pain because it's one of the muscles that helps to control the, the, the thigh bone. Um, so I, I do this all the time. This is actually glute muscle. That's my, my sign language for glute muscle. When Here's the knee, so just to orient you. When the glute muscles fire... It helps to turn the thigh bone out, which pressurizes the knee appropriately, shuts off the, the quads a bit. And that's what you want to be doing long term whenever you're moving so that your knee is moving properly. So if you have a problem with your piriformis up here in the glutes, it's not going to allow the glutes to work properly. And that can begin to, to pressurize the knee. Um, so we see this often in patients that come in with uh, sciatica because they might have their piriformis involved. We have to address the glute muscles. Um, you know, why are they misfiring? It's usually like a low back problem, a tailbone problem. The, the, the pelvis bones can be out of alignment or there, there could be other issues feeding into it. And we have to fix that first in order for their knee problem to get better. That, that happens consistently. So I hope that answers your question there, Andrew. All right, I'm gonna get to these last ones and then we're done. Um, Neela Prakashdi, thank you. You're welcome, Neela. Dash T. Wright sends a heart with a white cross. Oh, and he says, I, I try the water and exercise and it worked. Awesome, Dash T. Glad it worked for you. Thanks for letting us know. Barb H., I follow your glute and ab strengthening protocol. I even changed my walking to exactly how you suggested. Problem is it's making my left TKR, that's a total knee replacement, knee and hip sore suggestions. 
Ah, that's that's a loaded question, Barb H. Um, you're probably doing it too hard, is my suspicion. Now, the, the first questions that I would have for you, Barb, is um, is it hurting in your muscles, like you're sore? Like maybe it's just normal muscle soreness that you kind of have to go through in order to make things better. Um, and if it's not, if it's actually hurting in your joint, then you that's a big deal. You don't want to proceed. You need to calm down how intensely you're exercising. Um, you know, it might be the reps, it might be the, the sets. Um, so like, let's just say you're doing a hundred reps in a day and 10 sets of 10, then you might go to do 70 or you might do five sets of, of, of five. You know, you, you got to play around with the, the dosage of exercise so that it's the right amount to work your muscles, but without aggravating joints, tendons, ligaments, cartilage, all that other stuff, surgeries, like your, your knee replacement. Um, so you, you've, you've just got to find the right balance. And then that's assuming that you have the right exercise picked out. It, it might be that you're doing the wrong exercises too, um, or that you're doing the right exercises with wrong technique, that you're just not quite firing the right muscles or the movements a little off. You, you need to find some precision here. And that's what we teach on our channel. So go back and watch our videos on, on how you're doing these exercises and make sure you're doing them just right. If, if, you're, if you're doing my videos, go back and watch them again because if you do them just right, make sure the right, I go into detail about which muscles to work, what not to feel, what you shouldn't be firing, how high to go, follow all those instructions and you'll probably be on the right track. You just got to adapt it to your body because everybody's body is a little bit different. All right, last two. Andrew, thanks. You're welcome. And Miriam, I've seen you on our channel. Thank you so much for commenting. I know you were from Ireland. Thank, it's it's great to, to hear that you're from Ireland, Miriam. Thanks so much for watching, everybody. And we'll catch you next week. Have a wonderful, have a wonderful week. Bye-bye.